We don't need any game instructions for that, exclaimed the building blocks. We'll throw ourselves at its head, all of us at once. And if that doesn't work, I'll ride over it, added Skateboard. I could cut it open with my jumping spring, grin jumping jack happily. Ah, my favourite part of any kid's film. The scene where they all plan to assault, disembowel, garrot, and hopefully murder the new guy. Or I'll throttle it with my telephone cord. Stop this now, scolded Cuddly. You've all gone crazy. No, first thing in the morning we'll talk to Pamper. He's bound to listen to reason. The toys looked rather sceptical. Pity, murmured Jumping Jack. I was looking forward to feasting on his entrails after disemboweling him, Jumping Jack explained. Pino wasn't convinced either. <laughs> his tears just couldn't stop falling. But the toys were tired after all the sympathizing, and one by one they fell asleep, except for Pino. He felt deserted. That baby's right. No one loves me anymore. I'm just a nuisance. They probably all wish I was no longer here. Pino decided to run away and never return. Wait, hold the fuck! They're all literally on your side! They just said that they wanted to help you murder the dumb fuck baby! So he packed his bundle and scrambled out of the window. It was dark outside. Everyone was asleep. Pino was all alone in the street. <gasps> Now the others will see how they do without me. The little boy will also see what taking that awful thing to bed will bring him. That eternal noise will get on his nerves. But then there won't be Pino there anymore when he can't sleep or is afraid of the dark. Yes, that's just how it'll be. This is starting to sound a lot more like a lover's spat than a story about toys at this point. Oi! Is that toy out after curfew? Motherfucker, he's stealing shit! Get him! Seriously though, why are the police after him? Do they have a no toys out after dark rule or something? I don't know what mental hospital they broke into to record those two wheelie bins laughing sound effects, but they probably shouldn't be getting their audio this way. Also, why did this get the dramatic dingo sting when it's not remotely dramatic? It's more stupid than anything. Oh, that's mean to throw away a banana peel like that. Hey, look, Mumf. Giggled Mumf. I think he's just right for us. From the look of him, he should have landed here ages ago. Shall we snatch him, asked Mumf. Pino stared in shock. Stop it! I've done nothing to you! The streetlight leaned forward curiously to see what was happening. What the fuck? Streetlights are sentient now! I know that the garbage cans didn't give me much trouble, but how the fuck does this even work? At least with Toy Story, things with a face could talk and come to life. This makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Does that mean like the carpet's alive as well, or does that get a pass? Does the lamp bend metal in order to move? Like, what the shit is any of this? Do you want to get him or I? Muff asked her brother. As much as I hate to say so, I'd love to have him. But I'm only allowed to take recyclable garbage, and this one could definitely not be used again. He belongs to you, sister, said Month generously. Sister? I guess she was recycled into a man? Or however that shit works? Okay then, come along, little one. Up into the garbage can and off to the garbage disposal, laughed Month. Now don't carry on like that, it's very comfortable up here with us, tempted Month. That about sums it up, yeah. And it smells delightful. <laughs> Pino got paralyzed with shock as he heard the garbage cans talking. What does he even have to be afraid of? They literally have to convince him to let them eat him. They're the worst predators in history. And now the rats were also coming closer. While considering whether to start nibbling at him at once or to play a bit of cat and mouse with him. 
Again, Penis has nothing to worry about because these rats are too fucking lazy to go after him. They might as well be inanimate trash cans for all it's worth. Mind you, he is stupid enough to fall for their wily ways, so I guess he has something to be worried about. The streetlight took pity on poor Pino. The streetlight took so much pity on poor Penis that he replayed his only bit of animation for him just to cheer him up. Scene continuity be damned. Hurry up, little one, before the rats get their teeth and stuck into you, she called to him. Pino woke from his paralysed fear and up and ran as fast as his legs would carry him. In his fright, he forgot his bundle. On and on, without turning around till his legs couldn't carry him anymore. Gee whiz, where have I landed up, he sobbed and looked around him. Oh, he ended up in Guide Bridge. You've really fucked up this time, Penis. They were all right. I really do belong in the garbage. Pino was afraid. Because he'd left his bundle behind, he had nothing to eat or drink. And his stomach was growling got louder and louder, which made things even worse. He doesn't even have a stomach. He's full of stuffing and cum. He doesn't even need to eat the dumb shit. Wait, does he shit? How does that work? What? I want to go home. I want to go back to Cuddly and Pronto and Rolio and Charlie Chip and Jumping Jack. Desperate, he fell onto an old and dilapidated couch that had been put out. If I'd only stayed home, even if the little boy didn't love me as much as before. But the others could still love me. He slowly cried himself to sleep. If it taught you this long to figure that out, you deserve to be homeless, you piece of shit. This morning, the toys were all rubbing their sleepy eyes. An unknown noise had woken them. Oh yes, yesterday it had been the little boy's birthday and a new toy had come to join them. You can hear that. We don't need a recap almost two thirds into the fucking movie, you piece of shit narrator. <sighs> yep, we're on the second act. Sure as fuck feels like it. <laughs> Can't you at least shut up in the early morning, said Rolla emphatically. You still haven't caught on. Babies are allowed to cry whenever they want to. <laughs> Grinned Pamper. Actually, that's not true. Babies can only communicate through crying because they can't speak yet. When they can speak, they're discouraged from crying. Wait, why the fuck am I explaining this? It's obviously too late for these arseholes. You're not crying, you're screaming, Mon Pronto. You've even woken me, and I'm relatively hard of hearing. You've got a lot to learn, Pamper, interceded Cuddly. You belong to us now, whether we like it or not. We have to be considerate of one another. I don't have to be considerate to anyone. If I complain about you, the little boy, he'll throw you all out, said Pamper. Wait, what? The toys taught to their owners? Do you people understand the basic concept of the Toy Story premise? Do you get any of it at all? So what? Does the little boy actually tell them who he's taking to bed? Do they get any say in it? Can't they just solve everything wrong with this movie by explaining the situation to him? Fuck it. I don't care. The others all moaned. Where is Pino? All started looking around. When I feel bad, I creep into my box, and then I close the lid. But as Pino doesn't have a box, maybe he's crept under the bed. Rolla surfed under the bed. He's not there. Hey, you there. Is Pino with you in your box? Jumping Jack asked the building blocks. No, he's not here with us either, they answered. His bundle's gone, said a shocked Charlie Chip. Oh, oh, I think he's run away. A good thing too. He disturbed me all night long with his crying. You can't say shit, Mr. I cry for attention. That's a joke coming from you, said Pronto. He's only thinly dressed. He'll catch cold, and apart from that, he doesn't know anyone out there, added a troubled cuddly. Now take it slow. Maybe he's hidden himself to make us worry. We should wait a little longer. But waiting was harder than the toys could have imagined, and apart from that 
Panda did not stop getting on their nerves. That's enough, be quiet, you little backbiter. Cuddly went for Pamper furiously, and the Cuddly Cushion was seldom angry. I've had it, said Roller finally. I can't stand it anymore, just sitting around. I'm going to go out and find Pino. Yes, you're right. We have to find him. The others all agreed. Hey, Charlie Chip, you have experience with chases and adventures, etc. You take over the lead. Charlie Chip was flattered. He could finally show the others what was in him. Glad to, he said. I know all the traps we could fall into on the way, and all the tricks to escape from a dangerous situation. I also know how to drag out a scene with animation loops. Charlie Chip switched himself on. He switched himself on? How the fuck does that work? Does that mean he's been sentient this whole time? Please don't hurt me. I actually use you every once in a while. All right, said Cuddly. Then off you go. I'll stay here in case Pino shows up. But Pronto must go with you, so we can keep in contact. I have to go along as well. After all, I'm the only one who can scare those criminals that are holding Pino, so... <laughs> <laughs> Out of all these idiotic roles that these toys have assigned themselves, such as the phone trying to work as an actual phone and the Game Boy trying to be the guide, the Jack in the Box is the only one who would actually succeed in his job of scaring the living fuck out of people. And what about me, ass Pepper? You... you stay here. Was he about to break into song there? You... you go kill yourself! They all cried simultaneously. Your screaming is the last thing we need. Anyway, you're happy that Pino disappeared. You said so yourself. But then I'm here all alone, with no one to play with me, complained Pamper. What you really mean is no one to annoy. No, no, you stay here. Pamper started howling. <coughs> but the toys just ignored it. Cuddly the Cushion accompanied his friends to the front door. Hop on, commanded Roller. Pronto, Charlie Chip and Jumpy Jack jumped on and took their places. Be careful, called Cuddly as the train took off. Yes, train. This is really not just a skateboard with some shit piled on top of it. So these jackasses roll around to the tune of the Peter Gunn theme until they reach the idiot trash cans from earlier. I don't even know how these two survive since their stomachs get emptied as soon as they're filled, like they're supermodels or something. But then I remember that this is a movie about a 50 year old man that sleeps with a little girl's doll and his dad's old cum rag, so I guess anything's possible. They then debate with themselves if they should question the only witnesses of what went down last night before eventually asking them. There! That's two minutes of movie I've saved you from. You're welcome. Hey you there, have you seen Pino? Pino? Who could that be? said Mumph. Well, he's a rather tatty rag doll. Yeah. Is that skateboard high? Why the fuck would these two know Penis by his name? The Idiot Express don't even know if they saw him yet. With a striped cap? Asked Mum. Yes, that's him, cried the excited toys. Pino, Pino's his name, laughed the garbage cans. <laughs> we found him. That makes 867 points, chirped Charlie Chip. Apparently there's something funny about Penis's name. They're really looking for him. <laughs> Stop that and tell us where he went to scold a jumping jack who was beginning to lose patience. But the garbage cans just kept laughing. Once they start, it's hard to stop them, grinned a rat who had been observing everything. And you? Maybe you know where Pino has gone, asked Roller. Mm, no idea, said the rat. Really? I've no idea. He ran away from us. Man, ever since Rasputin blew himself up like a fucking idiot, Fat Shoulder Rat's life has gone straight downhill. Poor little guy. The toys were right. 
But there was no Pino to be found. Which is why they look so goddamn happy about it. Also, bit late in the game to be bringing this up, but what's the point in a skateboard where one end of it's bent? Pino slowly awoke. Pino rubbed his eyes. Oh, so it's alright for penis then. The attention seeking little wank sock. Oh, wow. I had a bad dream last night. Oh, what happened was. I was on a train full of Gordon Freemans. Hey, where are you all? He looked around. He was sitting on an old sofa in a junkyard. He hadn't dreamt it, it was all real. And the fear came back with the memory. Oh my goodness, what a pile of misery we have here. Funny, that's just what I was about to say about this fucking movie. He heard the sudden racket and looked up in front. Actually, this is my apartment. Not very polite of you to stay here overnight without knocking and asking, scolded the garden dwarf. One, that's a junkyard, not an apartment. And two, you don't own it, you stupid gnome fuck. Legally, it has to be yours for it to be your property. Dickhead. He started crying. <laughs> oh, no, don't start crying. You sound like a little girl and it creeps the fuck out of me. It brings back some horrible memories of the last guest that I had here. I can imagine what happened. <laughs> Come on, tell me about it. Then you'll feel better. You'll see. By the way, my name is Michel. Good, at least he has a name to give to the police after he's violently fucked in this junkyard. And so Pina told him of his friends and the birthday and the new toy. Remind me why I should give a shit. This guy's basically the same character as that old pervert pig from Janice the Little Pig. I'm not even kidding, they even have the same voice actor and everything. He's just what Toy Story needed to make it a true masterpiece. No, he's not. Slowly, Pino stopped sobbing and followed Michelle around. Pfft, what the fuck's wrong with their faces? Seriously, could these two look any more stupid during their walk cycles? They didn't even get the best cards dealt to them in life to begin with, and now they're just trying to look stupid and ugly. But to live here? Forever? That was something he just couldn't imagine. This may be all right for you, he said to Michel. You're used to living in the open. But I'm too good to live in such a shithole. You pompous son of a whore. In the meantime, Pino's friends were more and more desperate. They had searched the whole area, but found no Pino. Game over. What do you mean, game over, asked Roller. Just that. We've lost. Game over. The end. Oh good, does that mean this thing's over and I can actually play something good now? Oh, of course not. This dumb shit robot was just looking for an excuse to say a shit catchphrase that'll never catch on. Also, bit of a nitpick, but out of all of the colours that you can turn into, why did you have to pick pink. Now you can't tell between the screen and your body, you stupid Game Gear piece of shit. I'll call home, said Pronto. Maybe, maybe Piano just hid away and Cuddly has found him. Mmm, yes, baby. What are you wearing? Ooh, you naughty bitch, you. Mmm, how wide are those legs of yours? Ah, oh, shit, I got another call. Talk later, baby. What? I'm... No, just as you've asked. We presume that he's not with you either. No, answered Cuddly sadly. He's not here. Oh, dear, said Pronto. What do you want to do now? Well, it looks... It looks like we'll have to break off the search. It'll be dark soon, said Pronto wearily. Cuddly sadly hung up the receiver. They didn't find him. Asked Pamper. Cuddly shook his head. And now you want to make me feel guilty! Leave me alone. (coughs) 
So the losers make their way back home past the age-old graffiti that's existed since Captain Crunchbone founded this asinine town back in... Whenever. As luck would have it, Rasputin's stupid fat rat saves the day by informing them that the old wank sock has ended up going to the dump where he fucking belongs. Pino! Screamed Jumping Jack loudly and excitedly. Pino! Pino! Oh shit, looks like I'll have to go out there and take care of that rabble again. Hmm, if I'm not mistaken, somebody's calling you, said Michel. Calling me? asked Pina. No, that can't be. Who would be calling me? Pino! 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 Oh god, not those wankers. I thought that the one silver lining of this was that I got away from them. <laughs> Jumping Jack, Roller, Pronto, Charlie, Chip, how did you all get here? Oh, this is great. Now don't start crying again, said Michel, obviously touched. What the shit is that? Oh look, oh look, Albert Wesker's joining in on the celebrations too. Blow me. Do you live here now? Asked Charlie Chip. Looks pretty interesting, stated Jumping Jack, whose head was at the highest extension so that he could check out the area. You could have ended up somewhere worse. Does that mean that you think I should stay here? Do you really don't want me to come back with you? Huh? Oh, but of course, naturally we do. Do you still want to? They asked. If I'm still allowed. But of course, said Charlie Chip happily. That's why we came looking for you. But what about Pamper? Asked Pronto. I'll punch him in the mouth if he screams again or annoys Pino, promised Jumping Jack. With what hands? Well, at least after this long adventure, they all learnt something about themselves. That they all hate Pamper. You know, like they knew at the beginning of the fucking story when they tried to murder him? So the idiot toys make their way home via montage that lasts nearly two minutes. They reunite on 50-year-old boy's porch. And Penis celebrates by giving the old pillow a blowjob. And Pampa learns the true meaning of Christmas or something. I don't fucking care. An unusually quiet voice. Leave Pino alone, Jumping Jack spat at him immediately. You know what? Pino said generously to his friends. It's not really Pampa's fault that the little boy takes him to bed with him. There's a great line to take out of context. So the movie ends with a load of obnoxious sound effects, the characters don't change, and the only thing we have to hope for is that they all get thrown in a dumpster when little boy goes to college, or an old people's home, in Toy Story 3. Maybe they'll get incinerated as well. It belongs on a great big fire! Yeah.